Hi, we're team Hey Hey Hey, and we're going to be giving you an introduction to Google Cloud Dataflow. Google has created many tools for data processing. One of the most prominent being MapReduce, which allows data to be processed and analyzed in parallel. With each new tool, Google has made it easier and easier to process data. And now with Cloud Dataflow, users can focus on analyzing the data and not on the implementation details. So what is Cloud Dataflow? Firstly, it's a unified programming model and a managed service for developing and executing a wide range of data processing patterns, such as ETL, batch computation, and continuous computation. It frees the user from operational tasks like resource management and performance optimization. Dataflow is fully managed, transparently handling resource lifetime and can dynamically provision resources to minimize latency while maintaining high utilization efficiency. Dataflow resources are allocated on demand, providing users with nearly limitless resource capacity to solve every big data processing challenge. Its unified programming model utilizes Apache Beam to eliminate the programming model switching costs between batch and continuous stream processing, enabling developers to express computational requirements regardless of data source. Dataflow is also integrated and open source, built upon services like Google Compute Engine. It's seamlessly integrated with Cloud Storage, Cloud PubSub, Cloud Data Store, Cloud Bigtable, and BigQuery. The Apache Beam SDKs are available in Java and Python, enabling developers to implement custom extensions and choose alternate execution engines. We know that Cloud Dataflow is the successor of MapReduce. So what is the difference between MapReduce and Cloud Dataflow? A little bit of background about MapReduce. It was invented by Google more than a decade ago to process massive data sets using distributed computing. As the volume of information and data sources have increased, MapReduce is no longer an appropriate technology for real-time volume data processing. For one, MapReduce is batch-oriented, which means that it is unable to simultaneously handle both a large amount of data that is set aside for a scheduled batch process and an ad hoc stream of unsorted data. On the other hand, the introduction of Google Cloud Dataflow aims to help companies to analyze large volume of data in real time in the cloud. It is a fully managed service for creating data pipelines that ingest, transform and analyze data in both batch and streaming modes. Furthermore, Google Cloud Dataflow is scalable regardless of data size. Cloud Dataflow makes it easy for you to get actionable insights from your data while lowering operational costs without the hassle of deploying, maintaining or scaling infrastructure. You can use Cloud Dataflow for use cases like ETL, batch data processing and streaming analytics and it will automatically optimize, deploy and manage the code and resources required. In the recent years, we noticed that there is a declining usage of MapReduce as it as it has limited capabilities to handle large data sets. On the other hand, Google Cloud Platform, which is built upon Google Compute Engine, it has an operationally familiar compute environment that seamlessly integrates with Cloud Storage, Cloud PubSub, Cloud Data Store, Cloud Bigtable, and BigQuery. More importantly, Google Cloud Platform lets you focus on what's next for your business. It frees you from the overhead of managing infrastructure and provisioning servers and configuring networks. So how does it work? Google Cloud Dataflow provides a simple yet powerful model for building both batch and streaming parallel data processing pipelines. It also has a wide range of data collection, transformation and grouping operations to allow users to implement complex streaming data processing algorithms. For example, um, it includes filtered, filtered and grouped, filtered and grouped and windowed uh, results where the results are windowed by time based on the live stream. Hi, good day. So um, as part of the demonstration for the Google Cloud Dataflow, I'll be using a example in our AA practice paper. So um, the example would be for lion, tigers, bears, CSV. And um, so this is the standard code that I'm showing that we learn in class. Um, so that's the dot .skip, you know, dot .map, where you split it up and then you know, you, you pipe it in and you check if the first few equals tiger and the second equals A. So if it's a tiger and if it's from group A 
and the count is larger than equals to 5, we will count the total number. So um, when we run this, we will get 15. The total count is 15. So uh, going over here, so this is for the test directory. So if you realize uh, it's a pom.xml file, um, basically Google Cloud Data Flow only really supports Maven due to the amount of yeah, dependencies that they have. Yep, so onto the test file. So these are all the imports that we have and this is just a quick brief um, same scenario that I had to recreate. So um, as you know earlier Google Cloud Data Flow runs on a pipeline. So uh, as you can see here, uh, I'm creating the pipeline and then I'm applying it to this particular transformation which will create a P collection. So this is the reading part and then after that once with the string I'll change it once again I'll map it I'll map the elements into a string array. So um, it's quite string in the sense that you have to actually have a type descriptor. And now that for the integer, last but not least I will count, you know, I'll do a logic check. So uh, I will do a do function which um, converts a string array to an integer at the end. So this lets the program know what to anticipate. And then this is a classic method that they want you to overwrite. So uh, after that, you know, this is the important part where you have the logic, you know. Now yeah, that uh, if if uh, this is true, then I will output a value of one, which means that it counts. So uh, after that, we want to sum everything up. So uh, we want to combine globally across all of the different key collections that might have been split up by the cloud data flow application. And last but not least, you know we want to run it. And now that we want to write it out to a file called out, out file dot text, and then we will run the whole scenario. So first, we have to build and clean it. Then that next up, we'll just run it. So on success, uh, nothing shows here because um, nothing is meant to show here. We actually have to go here. So this is the directory of the file, and as you can see, uh, you can see out file dot text. So you can actually designate how many files you want to split into, and you can actually do it online as well. But I'm using a local pipeline runner, and you can see with uh, the values the same. So that concludes the demo. I'm using the local runner as I said earlier. You can also replicate this um, with different services. There's Apache Spark, Apache Flint. Um, if I'm not even wrong, I mean that's on top of Google's own native support for this. And in the future, the SDK is branching into Apache Beam. So yeah, exciting times. Thank you. We take a look at real-life businesses that uses Google Cloud Platform to enhance their businesses. We have companies such as Spotify, a music streaming company, Coca-Cola, and Pocket Gems, a company that create mobile application games. Spotify. Spotify faced a series of problems before using Google Cloud Platform. Problems such as conducting a complex query may take up to a day or even left it running overnight. Difficulty in storing and processing big data, and they find it very hard in building a great data center. With Google Cloud Platform, they are able to conduct complex queries much faster. Similar queries can take up to minutes or even seconds to complete. Shifting the system architecture problems to the cloud and to Google, Spotify is able to focus more on turning data into value. And lastly, with the technology of big data and data flow, Spotify has evolved to provide greater user experience to the users, recommending them songs, artists, and albums of their preferences. They are also able to provide and explore more and new insights. The second example we cover today is project by Coca-Cola during the World Cup event named Wonka Photo Projects. Coca-Cola aimed to create an experience for everyone from the world to be able to send in their photo and it will be printed in a flag, which is shown during the opening ceremony. The participants will also be able to get a notification when their photo appears on the screen for live television. For this project, there are 3.5 million photos which are from over 200 countries with different photo format and different source. Therefore, instant searching and recognizing a photo is a real challenge. 
with Google Cloud Platform, Coca-Cola are able to achieve their goal as such photos are able to be processed and respond immediately within seconds. It is also able to scale up the search engine when they need it to be able to handle concurrently searching for photos to achieve optimal results. Lastly, trust is considered as an important reason Coca-Cola chose to work with Google Cloud Platform. It is reliable and consistent as backup data and disaster recovery are also provided as a service. Another example is Pocket Gems, a company which creates mobile gaming. With the project changing the game, Pocket Gems are aimed to achieve two main objectives. First, social aspect, as mobile games are more fun and enjoyable when players are able to interact with their friends seamlessly. Second, the server are able to handle to have a good stability which can handle hundreds of thousands of players at the same time. With Google Cloud Platform, Pocket Gems are amazed with the fact that the server can be scaled up and down within seconds when there are a huge flood of players or when there are none. They also love the service by Google Cloud Platform that they do all they need to worry is designing the game as the back end are handled by Google and it just works. Having seen the demonstration as well as some real world examples of it. We hope you have a better understanding of how Google Cloud Data Flow works as well as when you can adopt such a solution. Therefore, to summarize this presentation, it is important for us to address the benefits and limitations of Google Cloud Data Flow. The first benefit of Google Cloud Data Flow is being multifunctional. So, as a generalization, most database technologies have only one specialty which is either batch processing or performing lightning fast analytics. Google Cloud Dataflow on the other hand has the ability to perform ETL extract, transform loading, handle batch processing as well as stream real-life analytics just to name a few of its capabilities. Hence we can see how we can perform multiple functions with only the adoption of one solution. Secondly, Google Cloud Dataflow has the ability to provide dynamic work rebalancing as well as intelligent auto-scaling. This then allows for an increased performance with almost zero increased operational complexity and is a great indication as to why most companies are starting to adopt the Google Cloud data flow. Thirdly, thanks to the capabilities as mentioned earlier on, it therefore allows Google Cloud data flow to handle multi-petabyte data sets, which is something its predecessor, the map reducer, has been unable to handle. Last but not least, we have the ease of use. Google Cloud Dataflow features a developer-friendly API with a unified approach to batch and streamline analysis. It can be easily integrated with Google Platform and its many different services, and most importantly, it is open source under the Apache Beam. Also, it is language agnostic and it contains many familiar functions seen in MapReduce and in SQL. So with all the benefits that we've listed early on, there are actually certain limitations to Google Cloud Data Flow itself, with the first being its inability to process compressed data parallelly. So when reading from um, actual uncompressed data, the work can be parallelized much better. But when it comes to compressed data, especially huge huge chunks of compressed data, each file can only be processed by one work at a time, and therefore it's actually quite time consuming. And this actually contributes to um, poorer performance as compared to uncompressed data. Secondly, um, Google Cloud Data Flow actually has the inability to read non-text files, in other words, um, plain text file or XML. So let's say you have a PDF document that you want the data flow to actually read, there are actually no such libraries that help perform such activities. However, there are actually um, third-party uh, applications that you can, or readers that you can use to help um, improve the process which enables you to create models based on the PDF where you can run through data flow itself. Um, last but not least, there is this issue of um, it being time consuming especially when the user wants to split, split a large query. So let's say the user has a large database to read from a database and he wants to split up the query to make it uh, perform more effectively and efficiently. But the Google Cloud Data Flow actually does not allow this because it, there is no way to control the split uh, parallelism of a single reader and 
The only solution to that is to create multiple readers and have each reader run its own collection and flatten it, which could be um, rather time consuming if you want to split up your queries from a large database. Despite the limitations as mentioned earlier on, we believe that Google Cloud Data Flow will gradually improve and address these limitations. We've now come to the end of our presentation and we hope you have learned as much as we did. Thank you.